Hello everybody, it's Mike Hughes here, and in this episode we'll do Arachnoshima Dungeon, which is located in the Sadida Kingdom. Um, so, well, you can travel there by boat, it's like the closest dungeon from the uh, ship to this island. Um, it's uh, designed for level 80, but I wouldn't really recommend going there uh, before you reach level 90. Because, well, or unless you have some decent gear, because then you can actually go there a bit earlier. But I suppose that level 85, 90 is an absolute minimum for this dungeon because the monsters here are kind of difficult. Okay, so well, I start describing the details uh, as we progress through the rooms. Okay, so this is the second room of the dungeon, and this is where we'll start to uh, we'll start to record this video. So I actually had to. Um, drop one of my accounts because of um, the uh, memory leak introduced with the newest patch so I'm actually kind of forced to take someone along on my every run right now because I can't do this dungeon with a multiman I think mm, so okay I'll just uh, go for describing what you can actually find in this dungeon so first of all um, like every like okay arachnoplasm and uh this l by arachne monster both have an ability to stack um radiation on you so these are like um okay so this is actually kind of a buff slash debuff because every single stack of it uh kind of alters your statistics and uh this can actually give you some kind of bonuses too because um um at the moment okay so if you have one stack of radiation you only gain damage so it's like actually a slight damage bonus basically um and every single stack after that will actually debuff your resistances and also has some other effects so for instance it can remove your range but it can give you an mp and then it can actually mm, cause every single ap and ap you use to um to modify uh your hp in some way so it's kind of a complex thing here mm. most important thing is not to get it to very high values because then it begins to punish you heavily you will just keep losing hp and on the 10th stack you die so you certainly don't want to go that far mm, so preferably you will just want to stay at one stack or just keep getting stacks at all if possible um, these stacks will be applied every single time you get attacked by the albino arachne and every single time the um, arachno bomb explodes next to you um, okay so I'll now try to explain how do those things appear and how do these monsters work? So, uh, the uh, um, arachnoplasms are actually um, summoner uh, monsters, which also have very high damage output. Um, and I think this is it as far as they are concerned. And so they can actually melee you for quite high values. And uh, apart from that, um, they also have an ability to um summon uh, little spiderlings which are stunned on the turn when they're summoned so they're not a threat on the first turn you can kill them but but if you don't uh, uh if you don't do that you will actually uh get punished because on the second turn they explode and they deal kind of heavy damage and also they um um, apply this radiation radiation stack in a AOE so every single character around them will actually suffer some kind of damage so it's not like uh, the best idea to to uh, not to let those things alive like stay alive so uh, you, you do want to either kill the bombs as soon as possible uh, or you want to kill the summoners Um, okay, other than that, the albino arachnids here, which 
uh, have this ability to mm, to deal like lots of damage they can actually approach a character and just keep stabbing you over and over again until you drop so um, they are fairly um, fairly dangerous they can also apply the radiation stacks with each attack which means that basically after one turn when you get hit by those uh, you suffer very high uh, resistance loss mm, I'm trying to look for someone who has those stacks so Sakri here has <laughs> minus 60% resistance and minus one range and this just keeps getting worse and then some additional um, debuffs, scripted debuffs appear which are even nastier so you don't really want to go there if possible so I think the calf is kind of almost you can almost kill this thing and now it's gonna be Sacrius turn why it didn't pass the turn come on okay um, so I'll be trying to do both challenges let's see how my teammates like my, my teammate actually reacts to this kind of kind of consumed by recording right now so it might be a bit hard for me to <laughs> like focus on killing stuff properly so since this dungeon is kind of easy you shouldn't have too much trouble with the monsters mm. I mean, okay, so you can't really allow them to stack too much of this radiation. So having multiple albino arachnids hitting you is a really bad thing, which can actually drop you dead very quickly. Um, so you don't want to do that. You can see that my uh, Inutrov is actually taking very heavy damage right now because he has those stacks applied. Um, so this is not the best thing that can happen mm, so I try to get him out of that situation right now um, remember that if you get 10 stacks it actually kills you it removes you from the dungeon too I mean okay so it doesn't like remove your crack you actually fully die you can't resurrect at all so um, it's really good if you are able to eliminate them those monsters before they can actually harm you harder um, and if you do have a lot of those stacks it's the best thing that well, the best thing you can do in that situation is basically um, just to run away okay. fog and notes are like pretty damn insane as far as this movement stuff goes because like the guy just keeps dashing around the map it's pretty fun I think okay, so you don't want to get those stacks and if you can avoid that you basically good to go I try to like eliminate as many monsters as I can here because I don't really want my uh, Sakria to drop dead at least, yeah. Just try to get my faker in here. Hope she can make it in time. Yeah. Okay. No, I can. I actually have to move around a bit. Try to escape out of its attack range. This will cost me a lot of breads, but it's. I presume it's better than. Okay, just losing the fight, like losing a character in the fight. The Inu had to die because I can't heal in this fight either. But, well, the amount of XP I should get from this is kind of acceptable, I believe. So uh, I would call it worth. Unless someone else dies, this will suck. So I just try to, to kill the stuff right now. Okay. 
it's kind of a shame that I can't use the mm, Faker to its full ability here because uh, the monsters are very resistant to fire. So this is perhaps another piece of advice for you. Do not bring um, any um, any fire damage dealers if you can avoid that. Or if you have to bring someone who is fire specced, make sure that they also have leveled some other uh, skill disciplines. So for instance, my uh, my Faker is fire mostly, but she also has very high level on her air. F uh, I mean on her. Uh, water spell so she can deal some kind of damage which is obviously a very good thing okay so you can see that there's like a lot of xp here so i probably won't uh won't have to heal up a lot because of that um i dropped some expensive shoulder pads as well which is i presume a very good thing i mean it's better to drop something than not to drop anything i guess okay and then I'll just try re to record another room for you soon. Okay, so this is uh, room number three of this dungeon. Um, it's basically kind of easy place to do. Um, so as long as you can keep track of of your radiation stacks, you should be just fine, I guess. So I'll show you this uh, how to go through this one and. I think I won't be talking too much until something comes to my mind. In a normal situation, it's really a good idea to focus those albino arachnids first because they have like insane damage output <laughs> and you don't really want to expose yourself to that. Um, so I'll be trying to do exactly what I said. Apart from that, it's a really good idea to hit those arachnoplasms if you feel lucky. Um, so, because apart from those regular skills which I described, they can also teleport around the map. Which is kind of a nasty thing, if you ask me. Mm, other than that, um, well, they can just keep summoning. I think they have an internal cooldown of one turn. So, th well, the sooner they die, then the less stacks you actually get, which is obviously a decent thing. <laughs> Other than that, well, and the spectral ar arachnids are not really a threat. They can hit you w in an AoE, which is kind of nasty. Uh, if you do stand in a line, because they just hit like a staff, so they can actually hit in front of you, in front of them. They can hit multiple targets at um, one time. Um, but if you do actually avoid that, um, you should be just okay. So they can't really afford and like they can't actually apply any stacks, which is kind of a good thing. Mm -hmm. I failed the challenge, but I don't think it's worth to do either of those in this place. I suppose it m it's much better idea to just try to breeze through those monsters. Mm. A very important thing here is that you can see that my Sakura has actually received six stacks within the first turn. This actually means that he will die unless I get him out of there and I uh, somehow block the monsters from attacking him for the duration of a turn. Or unless I kill those Arachnids. Because killing them does not remove the stacks on the one hand, but it can um, actually prevent you getting more, which is a good one, I guess. <laughs> okay. So I would try to go for kill them all strategy, which involves killing the Arachnids, I guess. Try to prevent as much damage as much damage as I can. Um. I would also like to mention that, like. 
um, Foggenaut is not like as weak as I thought they were. So I mean Foggenauts are not as weak as I thought they were. So actually um, they appear to be fairly um, strong and mobile characters. Okay, Sakura is at seven stacks right now, so this means that he will surely die unless I get him get him out of there. Mm, because I don't think I have the means to kill this one. Can this guy reach him? Um, yeah, poo. This just sucks. Well, I don't think I can really do much against this guy. So if you get pretty lucky, then you, you can actually hold this arachnoplasm in place and kill it easily. But you can actually get very unlucky and in that situation it will just keep dodging and reappearing in some random places around the map. Um, you don't really want to, to get in such situation, like when you are almost killing this guy and then he actually reappears somewhere very distant. Um, so preferably you will just want to focus, focus the monsters one by one, especially in a situation where, uh, where you're not like very high level and where you can afford to split the damage. Okay, so just try to get away. So you can see that this arachnoplasm does actually deal some damage, so it's even on a very high resistance faker. So you don't really want to, like, you'd prefer to avoid taking this amount of damage as possible. So it's a good idea to either stay away from them or just eliminate those guys very quickly. Just try to get the fake away from this monster. Another thing here is that those dungeon tiles, which tend to be pretty dangerous, in the case of this dungeon, it's like pretty uh, irrelevant <laughs> what happens with like when you stab because this just applies to one uh, one radioactive stack. Oh, it's actually called mutation. Just kept it in my mind as radioactive. So basically, this is called mutation not uh, not radioactive but who really cares right it sucks because I'm actually taking more damage than by hitting those monsters right now then I deal that deal that da deal the damage so it's all caused by this uh, high mutation stacks which can actually cause you lose HP for each AP you use which ca which quite obviously ca can be very annoying. Okay, so just try to keep the monsters 
está, hein? It is going pretty slowly, and if your team is like even lower than this, uh, it will be even worse for you. So I really recommend taking like level 90 or something. I did succeed doing this dungeon at level 85, I think, for the first time. But I decided to give it a break and come back later because those monsters were just pretty... Like it was really taking a very long time to kill everything. And those mon those rooms are pretty much packed with the monsters. So preferably you want to come here when you're basically very high level character. Yeah. Or, you want to, or you can actually take someone high leveled with you. So this guy is actually level 101 but he just fits here very well because of that. His damage output is just perfect for this dungeon. So now I just try to heal up because for the final room I do want to have some HP at least. I'll just finish the fight here. You can see that the XP here is kind of fine, mm, despite the fact that I didn't do the challenges. So you actually, um, if you plan to like spend a few rounds in here, if you plan to get those phosphorescent parts, for instance. Um, you do actually uh, want to do the challenges too because it's kind of profitable, I think. <laughs> okay, so this will be the boss room, and I'll just pause for a while to heal up and then. Okay, so this is how this room actually looks like. Um, you can see that, uh, well, <laughs> and there uh, are. Uh, three arachnoplasms which means that there will be a lot of bombs and there's just one uh, albin arachne which is always a very good thing because this means that well the monsters here just won't have a very high damage output okay so what you actually want to do here is to finish the boss first and then move on to those secondary targets. Um, so in this case, those will probably be the plasms and the Elbi Arachne. Uh, you want to kill boss fast because, well, even though uh, it doesn't really have any really high damage output, it actually constantly applies um, those mutation stacks on you like every turn and this can actually hurt a bit so because it just applies them to every single character on the battlefield so you want to avoid that if possible um, okay so I'll be trying to not to fail any challenges here which is always a very hard thing for me when I'm recording and when I'm on six characters at the same time Okay, I'll give the buff to the Sakria, I mean to, to the Kaflip. Now we'll just try to hit the boss as hard as possible. And then I'll just let the Kaflip finish her off. So the thing is that in here, um, after you kill the boss, there isn't really much uh, of a difference. Like the monsters are not really too powerful here or anything like this. So basically you want I'll just try to face to face engage the guy right now and just kill him <laughs> if I can. 
think that it's bad so I have to just go from the side I will leap one field and from here I should be able to just kill him yeah is that nope so this means that I'll actually have to mm, do something with a sacria um okay it's not a really really a good spot for a sacria I mean for the Catholic to be in anyway so I'll try to kill it with just regular attacks I think so since it's dead right now I can just try to focus on the secondary mo objective which in this case is killing every single other monster on the battlefield here so just try to focus on those targets if possible um, you really want to get rid of the bombs if uh, there is such possibility for you because those can actually be very nasty basically they do have some kind of damage output and well other than that um, they do also apply this radiation to multiple targets so well, the sooner you get rid of them the better um, especially that they do have some high stats so they can basically skip like dodge every single character you have and just get to, to the spots where they can actually hit multiple people um, so the most optimal thing to do here is perhaps to Mm. to kill the summoners first okay uh, I just messed up I didn't see it teleporting away I just hear yeah, Jesus I wouldn't be able to reach it anyway with my skills okay, so I just passed the turn mm, so the only annoying thing for me right now is that I actually have to kill them in melee and since they do teleport around, and since many characters do have this uh, minimum range on their skills, this might be a bit tricky. Mm, but, well, I'll just try my best, right? <laughs> okay. So, well, um, since the fake is actually sp mm, specced for uh, fire, um, well, and she does have some water spells leveled. This means that her damage output is not like optimal. I think I will be upgrading her set very soon, so this should improve to some extent. Especially that those water spells are pretty decent as far as well their support function goes as well. So this is what I will be doing. Um, okay, so generally speaking, if you do have some AOE. It's very good here because you can get rid of those bombs very easily and this means that you can actually avoid getting like those stacks like a lot of those stacks Oh shit, I didn't know I could actually fail it like this. It worked differently. I think they must have changed it, changed it in the most recent patch because it wasn't like this before. It's really weird. Pretty damn sure it was different. I remember dodging and actually 
like failing to dodge and still getting the bonus from the challenge I don't remember it failing this way, it's weird Kind of outrageous if you ask me, I just failed the challenge despite like, I'm pretty sure it worked differently before. So this is a bit undeserved fail in my opinion, but well it just shit happens right. So I try to kill it in melee now. I should succeed despite its high resistance, I think, yeah. Because I can't really afford to fail both challenges right now. start finishing the monsters off so you can actually get a lot of relief once the first monsters die here it's just gonna keep getting better after that I really need to read the Sakri right now because he's almost dead. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, so annoying. Okay. So just try to look for some vulnerable targets right now but this one seems fine try to land some damage on other monster and now I just move on very annoying okay so another trick for this like another tip for this dungeon is that you really shouldn't um, like uh, use the same attack many times on those uh, rachnoplasms because they can teleport and then you'll actually cast those skills on the ground instead of casting them on the monster itself so it's like a pretty bad idea to just keep stacking those spells like oh yeah i just did this <laughs> so i'm obviously not listening to myself right now I just don't want to do this if possible. So because this means that you actually waste AP and if you're a bit lower level than me, if you're just try harding this dungeon or just like trying to take a challenge here, then it might be a good idea to just <laughs> well come here at with some mm, well with like okay it's a really good idea to play patiently then like to not to miss any um, possibilities to deal the damage
just go drill a sec here even though my skills are not exactly leveled <laughs> I'm just still gonna try because I can so I'm trying to get um, the anu to F uh, water right now it's just gonna take me a while I suppose how much HP does this guy have 700 stone I can't so I definitely need to make it possible for the sacred to clear this turn to clear this turn I mean yeah I think this should do so this fight should be over very very soon right now so as you, s as you can see even though my Characters are pretty high level, and even though I took this high level guy with me, he's actually keeping up with the team's levels, actually. So, mm. but regardless, you can see that this dungeon really takes a bit of time, and um, the monsters here are very healthy, so you do really need a lot of patience, and you need some kind of decent damage output too, because otherwise, you might actually just end up spending really a lot of time on this. Or even losing the dungeon in the process. Just keep attacking right now. There's nothing like which would require me to worry. That would require me to worry. Pretty much okay. So this one is dead. So I can actually finish this fight with the rips, I think. No, I can't. Jeez. It'll take a bit more. Than I think that the Inutroph can, even though he sucks as the F Inu, he can actually do this. Oh, he can't. Okay, well, he can. I don't expect any loot here because I actually got some nice stuff. No, well, okay. I thought those were the phosphorescent items. I do have an amulet from here though. So, I guess. And the Alpha Bay Agama, which is also a very decent ring. So, I guess this was fine. Okay, so this will be it for this dungeon. As you can see, like there is nice loot here, and also if you do this dungeon, um, um, like many times you have a chance to drop those very expensive items, such as phosphorescent set and a I think it's called the spike which is a one-handed level 100 sword which actually has an AP so this is probably one of the really best in slot items uh, also on this uh, on the server which on which I'm playing right now those Black Widow gear pieces are pretty pricey too so you can actually get a lot of money, a lot of money from selling those parts of a set so those Black Widow items are also kind of valuable so I hope you guys found this guide well useful at least. Um, so if you did, please subscribe to the channel, comment below the video, click the like button, whatever you find suitable. And see you in the next episode.